guidance is internal. Ignition sequence starts. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Permission to board. Permission to come aboard. Permission to board. Permission to bring me aboard. Permission to come aboard. Welcome to the Permission Granted Podcast. Here's D.A. All right, welcome inside the newest, freshest episode of the Permission Granted Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. D.A. with you. And coming up a little bit later, Mirage and Brock are going to go back at it again in your producer side B portion of the podcast. I want to remind you that we're on both iTunes and YouTube every single week, so you can subscribe to us there. iTunes, it's easy. Just uh, search D.A.'s Permission Granted Podcast. And then also on YouTube, youtube.com slash the DA show. I'm very excited about our guest here on this week's episode because this is a really cool thing that I came across over the, the internet not long ago, the fictitious athlete hall of fame. And this is great because we all have our sports movies that we have our favorite athletes and whatnot. And now it appears there's a hall of fame for those athletes. Joining us is co-owner of the fictitious athlete hall of fame, Kirk Buckner. Drop it on by Kirk. How are you, bud? Doing very well. How about yourself? I'm doing great, my man. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's start at the genesis of this idea. Who came up with the idea? When did you come up with the idea for the fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame? I uh, like uh, a lot of great ideas that or interesting ideas they come up with. Oh, it came up at the bar. Uh, just one of those uh, bar talk conversations that sort of began. Uh, actually, sort of came up with uh, first from the NotInHallOfFame.com, which is my main site. And uh, from that, it was sort of loosely inspired when Sylvester Stallone got inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame in 2010, which raised some eyebrows for some people. Personally, I think he does belong in there. <laughs> having said that, I, I do, I, I really do. Uh, having said that, well, why not a Hall of Fame for people like Rocky? Once we sort of put that together, we d- wanted to make sure that Rocky was the only one that we inducted immediately. Uh, from there on, it's all going to be vote-generated. Now... Did Sylvester Stallone get into the Boxing Hall of Fame, or did Rocky get in the Hall of Fame? Sylvester Stallone did. Sylvester Stallone, who never professionally boxed in his life, is in the official Boxing Hall of Fame, which is in upstate New York, right? I believe so, yeah. There's so many different Boxing Halls of Fame. This, I, for the one that he's in, it's, yeah, I believe it's the New York-based one. Okay. So I know there's one in Vegas. There's two in Vegas, actually. All right, so how did they base that election of, of Sylvester Stallone into the Boxing Hall of Fame? I guess I just needed a big name. <laughs> Honestly, I really don't know. Uh, boxing is one of those interesting sports. Uh, I, don't, I like to think it's not on its last legs. I certainly grew up watching a lot of boxing, but I, I guess I just felt it was culturally relevant. And so you believe that as well. You think this is the right idea to get this guy in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I do, actually. I mean, Why not? I mean, uh, more people probably watched him box, uh, granted with fictional boxing, than um, than Mike Tyson, I can argue. <laughs> So, the genesis is that. How many beers deep were you when you thought about the fictitious athlete Hall of Fame? A good six. Uh, 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 probably Jack, more Jack Daniels actually okay. than anything All else. Right. But so that's any in, yeah, any idea inspired by uh, by a bottle of Jack is good as well. So, how many years ago is this when uh, you guys started it? Uh, that particular site uh, launched last year. So, actually, in two weeks, uh, we'll be announcing the the winners or I guess the class of 2014. Oh, this is exciting! So. How many inductees will there be in the new class? There will be three athletes and one contributor. Ooh, okay. And that, is that going to be what it goes going forward? The classes will always be three athletes, one contributor every year? Uh, no, actually, next year we've decided it's going to be three athletes again, but we're going to up it to two contributors, and then we're going to put add a veterans category for all movie or television characters before 1970. <laughs> Right, because what you guys have done is kind of put a, a, a line of demarcation. Your line of the sand is 1970 for films and media before that and after that. Why did you mark that as the line? 1970, uh, around that time, that's sort of when athletes became larger-than-life characters. They were making a lot more money. Uh, the, the, we moved a lot more from biopic pictures. Almost every, not almost, about half of the movies about athletics were, were biopics. So you don't have that many fictional characters. And half of those were boxing, half of those were corrupt box, corrupt promoters. So it was pretty much the same story over and over. Yeah. So we thought that was sort of when, the, since our athletes became more bigger celebrities, we, we had more visuals of them, that just sort of seemed like the right time for that. 
and most of the people who were sort of interested in that, that's sort of where they grew up watching a lot of these films anyway. Well, that's true, right? Because this is kind of a generation-specific type idea. You know, you guys are 1970 and on. If this is an internet uh, hall of fame for pop culture icons that are fake, that are uh, fictitious, then you have to really be kind of, um, you're kind of catering to somebody, I would say, under the age of 40 or 45. Would that be fair? Uh, Yeah, that'd be very fair. Actually, our demographics show that well over 50% of the people who visit our site are males 35 to 50 which I just happen to be one of. So it just sort of seemed to work out that way. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm in that uh, that demographic as well. So I wonder, do you think that this will catch uh, catch on with those younger uh, than us? Because I'm 35 years old. Uh, do you think that a 20-year-old is uh, going to be as invested, or is there something about our specific um, age group, let's say 30 to 50 right now, that kind of grew up on sports movies or grew up on sports television or whatnot, and look at those athletes in a different way than maybe a younger generation would? I don't think so. I mean, I, they, they certainly a lot more access to past culture events in terms of pop culture. Having said that, it's around, I guess, the age, I'm 42. Or it's around that age where you start looking back more as opposed to looking forward. True. So I think those people would be interested to a point, but they'd be more interested in sort of reliving their heroes or the people who were an inspiration at that point when they get older. Yeah, I guess that's a good point, right? Because um, there has to be a certain sense of nostalgia for you to put somebody in a Hall of Fame already. And for anybody that's under the age of, say, 25, they're still living through uh, the fictitious athletes that are that are affecting them and that will affect them, right? Right, and, and that's sort of why, I mean, it still would have interest for some people. Is it something that would be sort of larger than life at that point? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, think, yeah, I think it has to be something that you'd be more interested in at that age. So is it depressing that we, you and I, have hit this age where we are looking back on our past fictitious athlete icons? Oh, no, I'm, I'm the best on my life. The older I get, the happier <laughs> I seem to be. So uh, it seems to be working out pretty good for me. Okay, so uh, before we get to the, the new class, what, why did Rocky have to be the number one uh, first ballot no-brainer uh, and uh, inductee into the class, into the Hall of Fame? The man has a statue outside of him in Philadelphia, and the city demanded that it stay. I can't think of anyone more iconic than him right. in any capacity. <laughs> and it's, there's just something about that. Everyone sort of knows the films. They know the story. Uh, even as unbelievable as the last movie where he's sort of boxing at age 60. Well, we all watched it. <laughs> it was actually pretty good. All right, so what is the 2014 class going to look like for the fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame? I'll have to announce that in a couple of weeks. All right. So what so are I can't do, give that away just yet? Okay. Do we have? Do I have a list that I can look at where I'm going to say, okay, this guy belongs and this guy doesn't? Yeah, actually, uh, on the site, uh, it, it's listing the 15 finalists because uh, I I was inspired by the Football Hall of Fame and I like a lot of what they do. They pretty much make it a year long discussion. They're going. They announce their preliminary candidates in September. Uh, just recently, they did their semifinalists and then they have their finalists. So I, I mimicked that. So our 15 finalists are up. Okay. And 11 contributing finalists are up. All right. So I'm at your Hall of Fame, not in the Hall of Fame.com. I'm at the nominees, but there's 305 nominees. So where do I get the right. finalists? On the top part, it'll, it'll have the voting. Yeah. So the drop down is for the finalists. Okay. The athletes. Because it's just final the final round. votes left. Got it. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm pulling this down right now. And uh, here are the 15. All right, so let's start from the top. Al Bundy, married with children. Very solid candidate. Uh, Polk High School, uh, multiple touchdown games. I think he obviously is deserving of a nominee. I don't know if I would put him in the second class. I think he might have to wait. I I think that's probably probably what's going to happen. Uh, he actually led voting in the preliminary round, believe it or not. Is that right? Well, a lot of people love Aaron yeah, Children. Me, but yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, a lot of people liked uh, watching uh, um, the old school Married with Children and uh, his daughter Kelly and Bud. I mean, that's it's always still good on reruns. You know, it's, it is. It's 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 definitely a guilty pleasure. Uh, Apollo Creed, also a finalist. You have Rocky in the first class. To me, it'd be hard not for Apollo to get in the second class, especially if you're going to put four in. I definitely think he's deserving. He might get bumped, but I think he's a very strong candidate for this class. A very strong candidate. Uh, even the way he died at the end of, uh, or the beginning of Rocky IV, uh, 
would have let him get a little bit more offense in, but you know, I didn't write it. <laughs> did, did, do we take away points for rocking Apollo's awkward hug on the beach? Oh, I never even thought of that. Yeah, I think we would. I mean, like, uh, I, I take away points uh, for that awkward volleyball scene in Top Gun. Yeah, you have to. Yep, you have to. Um, Bobby Boucher, Adam Sandler's character in The Water Boy, again, solid finalist. I don't think he belongs in second ballot. Yeah, I, I think the case for Bobby Boucher, I can argue that he had probably the most dominating performance as a football player. Okay. Having said that, uh, you know, there's always sort of that, that when you have a sort of an athlete come out of nowhere that I've never really kind of bought into. Yeah. Much like his other character on the ballot, Happy Gilmore, sort of the same idea. Okay, so Happy Gilmore's on this. I would put Happy Gilmore in before I would put Bobby Boucher in, and not because he was more dominating at his sport, because as you said, Boucher was, because Happy Gilmore is a more iconic film. Uh, that's true. Uh, last time I played golf, uh, there was a hole where you could do it with a hockey stick. Exactly. So. Right, right, exactly. And you will always hear quotes from Happy Gilmore. The only quote you hear from the water boy is, oh, no, we suck again, or you can do it. And it's not even, that's not even Adam Sandler. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, Rob Schneider, who uh, I think is uh, asking someone if they want fries right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Crash Davis, Bull Durham on this, Kevin Costner's, uh, his character. To me, this is a very, very solid, very deserving second-class inductee. I think Crash belongs in here because he really is as iconic as it gets. Absolutely. Uh, and he did make the show, as he uh, eloquently put. Uh, great teacher. And I think also, too, Kevin Costner uh, is probably, if we ever do a section for the best celebrities who play athletes, Costner's got to be it. Yes. I mean, it was anyone, and I, I like how it's also transitioned to uh, draft day, sort of like now playing the general manager. Yeah, I've always been a Costner fan. I know he's made some real, uh, real awful uh, movies like uh, like Waterworld, and there's a number of others. But I don't know. Costner, to me, has always been, you know what you're going to get going in, and he normally pulls it off, especially in the sports movies. Absolutely. And there's just something also magic about it, and we buy it. Uh, you know, same movie, uh, although you could argue, or some have, that the more entertaining character was uh, Nuke Lelouch, but who threw a, a pitch worse than uh, Tim Robbins? Yeah, no, Crash has to be in before Nuke Lelouch. Can we put him in also for Fields of Dream? Can you have the same actor in twice for two different characters? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Uh, actually, because... Uh, and that's happened, too. Uh, actually, going back to Apollo Creed, he is needed as a finalist as Chubb Peterson and Happy Gilmore okay. for the contributors. So, yeah, okay. absolutely, you can. Okay. From The Hustler, a film from the 70s, uh, Paul Newman, Fast Eddie Felsen. Again, very yeah. solid candidate. I wonder, though, are we getting a little too old for the demographic that would vote on this? Because that is a film that I think a younger generation hasn't seen a lot of. Uh, I think, and I think that's very much possible. I was very surprised he squeaked in, frankly. Hmm. So he squeaked into the finals. Uh, Forrest yep. Gump, Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump, an incredible college football career at the University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, but it is only maybe a one or two year career, right? Did Forrest Gump do that for all four seasons in Tuscaloosa? I uh, wasn't real. No, I, I honestly don't know. And uh, he's also a little one-trick pony from what we saw. I guess just doing a lot of kickoff returns. Yeah, right. uh, But he's also, <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I guess if we did make All-American, didn't say for what, I'm assuming as a <laughs> special teamer. But, right. hey, why not? Ray, Ray Guy finally got in and for special teams. So, that's you know, actually, we have that. Yeah, that's a good point. If Ray Guy gets in, it would be appropriate that the first kick returner in uh, the fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame would get in the same year. But he's also our only multi-sport superstar. This was a ping-pong legend. Oh, that's true. You know, like, okay, we're yeah. going to put him in for the ping-pong as well. And uh, long-distance running. That's now, good... <laughs> my, yeah. now, my problem, though, is with Forrest Gump, though, it sort of uh, goes back to if, you're, if he's an athlete and he's barely aware that he's an athlete, it's not exactly sort of that overcoming adversity. I mean, yeah, he did because he clearly had a, wasn't the smartest guy, but... Right. It's also really not a sports film. So I, I have sort of that love-hate thing with the Forrest Gump as a candidate. Personally. Yeah, That's strong, just... yeah, strong candidate. I don't know if he gets in uh, just the second class. He might have to wait a couple of years. Um, so next up, The Longest Yard, Paul Crew, mm -hmm. uh, Burt Reynolds. Great character. Um, again, iconic. A leader on the field. Also a bit of a, uh, 
you know, kind of a uh, a renegade off of it and on it, I suppose. How's the how's the popularity been the uh, the voting for him? Well, you know, sort of going back to when we're talking about age age demographic, I actually thought that Sandler's version was going to do better. Okay. And it didn't. So that sort of uh, told me it, it told me that a lot of people do respect Burt Reynolds a lot more. Okay. Um, I like this one, Jimmy Chitwood Hoosiers. He fr- yes. now Hoosiers might be the most iconic sports film of all time. Maybe outside of Rocky, would that be fair? Uh, well, if, if not, it's definitely the most iconic basketball film. Then what's its competition? The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh. <laughs> right. Uh, the one where Whoopi Goldberg uh, coaches the Knicks. Is that a thing? Oh God. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, she couldn't do work. Maybe she could just be the general manager. Couldn't do worse than Isaiah. <laughs> I think Jimmy Chitwood has to get in. To me, he's a no-brainer 2014 inductee. Next up, you're talking about slap shot. Both Reggie Dunlop and the Hanson brothers. Was there yes. too much slap shot in this class alone? I thought so. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you how this sort of actually got pushed up there. Uh, for whatever reason, a website in the Netherlands a hockey-obsessed website in the Netherlands, I'm not making this up, okay. pushed for all their people to vote for Reggie Dunlop. And that's how he, got, he came out of nowhere to, to, be, to make the finals. Mm. Wow. Okay. So now he's in there. Uh, so they might push it into the finals. They might push him to get inducted. <laughs> Very well might. Uh, Sam Malone uh, from Cheers. Excellent, excellent inductee. Had a tremendous career with the Red Sox. Uh, again, I would wait on him for one or two classes, but I think Malone eventually gets in very deserving. I, I think eventually, after if these, they all make the finals at one point, uh, I would think that all of these will sort of make it in the next five years. Right. But yeah, Malone, that was one of my personal favorites. You don't see a lot of Cheers reruns, though, so I, I wonder how much sort of the generation coming up are that familiar with uh, this character. That's a very good point. As, uh, yeah. Or just seen as the wooden guy from CSI. Yeah, that's true. You know, you're a little older than I am, but growing up, um, certainly Cheers was on through the late 80s, early 90s, and then you could always find a Cheers rerun probably through the late 90s. And then I would say over the last 15 years, really hard to find Cheers. I wonder, do you think that Seinfeld would go the same way? Right now you can find a Seinfeld rerun on at almost all hours of the night. Eventually, maybe in five years, will Seinfeld then kind of become the Cheers and you can't find it anymore? I think mean, it could very well be, but Seinfeld just sort of has, a, it just transcends so much better. I was actually surprised George Costanza did not get in as a contributor. Now that's... You know, for his fine run as the <laughs> assistant general manager. <laughs> it's, it's true, the assistant to the traveling secretary. Okay, and then yeah. from uh, Major League, you've got both uh, Ricky Vaughn, Wild Thing, uh, Charlie yeah. Sheen, and then also Wesley Snipes, Willie Mays Hayes. In your mind, either one of those more deserving of the first class? Wild Thing, for sure. In Wild Thing more than Willie Mays Hayes. Absolutely. Uh, but again, personally, I, want, I think really the best character on that was Jake Taylor. Right. Yeah, right. But not as memorable as Wild Thing or Willie Mays Hayes. Not as flashy or dynamic. I, I mark, I, I take away points from Ricky Vaughn just for the very, very wimpy version of Wild Thing that he came out to. Oh, I mean, it's just a, spend it's some the, money. Get the, get, the, get the original Trogs version. <laughs> you know what's amazing? In 1989, I'm playing in uh, my minor league baseball, like Little League, uh, and we were in the minors. Then you, you graduate to the majors in fifth grade. This was fourth grade. And I played in. I played second base in center field, and I got the flip glasses. I desperately asked my dad, you got to find the flip glasses for me just because of Willie Mays Hayes. <laughs> and and there's another actor, too, Wesley Snipes, too. Really, he was just born to play athletes. Yes, no question about it. He looks like an athlete. and he See, that was the thing about Willie Mays Hayes. He really looked like he could be the leadoff hitter in, major league, in a Major League Baseball team. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, uh, there is a little bit of Otis Nixon in him, I think. Yes, good one. He's, his slide was very formatic, and uh, how he ran the bases was right. You know, you can tell when athletes are out there and they just don't look the part at all. Snipes. And, and, uh, yeah, and just like other athletes, Wesley didn't pay his taxes either, so he was just perfect. <laughs> and then finally, I mean, this guy I think has to be in, Roy Hobbs, the natural Robert Redford. Uh, that's, again, one of those, to me, him, Jimmy Chitwood, um, Crash Davis, you put them all in kind of the same conversation. Those are guys that I think have to be in this class. 
yeah, and that's another one that's that's done very well in every single round. And it, it's it is a it's a great movie. Actually, it's one of those movies when I was a kid, or you know, it was the mid eighties. Yeah, well, early teen. I didn't really get it, frankly. Uh, it's one of those movies that I had to watch again yeah. and again as an adult to really appreciate the nuances of that film. Right. All right, so my class would be, I just want this on record, my class for this year, the second class behind uh, Rocky, would be Apollo Creed, Crash Davis, Jimmy Chitwood, and then Roy Hobbs. That would be my four moving on. Well, it'd only be three of those because the one slot's going to one of the contributors. Oh, so there's to- four total slots then. Okay, so I would drop then Apollo. I'm going to put Crash Davis. Ooh, I don't know, maybe not. Chitwood and Roy Hobbs, definitely. Then it would have to be a, a debate between Apollo and Crash Davis. Probably, I'd probably put Crash Davis, I, I take that back, before Chitwood, or before Apollo. So that would be my three. I, I'm happy with what, whatever happens because <laughs> that's the other thing we wanted to make is just this is really for the people. For the people, you know, by like, the people, for the people. But yes, yeah. uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then we'll just run through the uh, the contributors' final round: Carl Spackler, Amazing Caddyshack, Chubbs Peterson, Happy Gilmore, Gordon Bombay, The Mighty Ducks, Harry Doyle from Major League, which is great. Uh, there's no color guy in the business quite like uh, the Bob Euchre uh, tandem, the play-by-play. Uh, broadcast guys in Major League, awesome. Hayden Fox from Coach, that is Coach from Coach. Jerry Maguire, Jimmy Dugan, manager, Tom Hanks from League of Their Own. Um, Mickey from Rocky. Buttermaker from the Bad News Bears, amazing. Mr. Miyagi, and then Norman Dale from Hoosiers, uh, Gene Hackman. So this is a strong class as well. I don't know how you're just going to get one out of that. Well, that's sort of why we're going to go with two next year. Yeah, there's too many good I, ones. I think that was one mistake we definitely made is just limiting it to one. And then what really, I really got pared down to that 11. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, yeah, one's just not going to cut it. So we're going to alternate it from one, then two, then one again, and then just keep doing it that way. Mm. Again, Mickey from Rocky is going to be tough to take out, but Mr. Miyagi has made so many films um, and is such well, a... He, he taught Hillary Swank. He loses points for that one <laughs> in the next karate kid. But nobody has more quotable quotes than Carl Spackler. I mean, everybody, no matter what round of golf you play, Spackler quotes always come up. So that's tough as well. Well, well you'll like this. Uh, the, a, semi, a semi-finalist, he didn't make the final round, was actually the gopher. Oh, that's fantastic. That's spectacular. Yeah, so, yeah, so the gopher and Clyde the orangutan actually was a <laughs> semi-finalist. So is the voting over now? Nope, uh, it's uh, two more weeks. All right, so you can go to not in the not in and you will see the mm-hmm. fictitious athlete Hall of Fame. You can vote there, and then uh, in two weeks you're going to announce the finalists. This is very exciting. Pretty excited about that because I get to do that on uh, television at Sportsnet uh, in uh, in Canada. Oh here. yeah, uh, you guys are excited at... about that. So wow, so this has gone big time for you. Uh, bigger than I thought it would. Yeah, and it's uh, well, it's something really fun, and a lot of people just love talking about it. And you don't even have to be a sports, fan, you know. To sort of to sort of get that, and, and I think if my my wife gets into stuff like this, my wife hates sports. She wanted to make sure that she voted for Jerry Maguire because <laughs> she just loves that chick flick idea. But yeah, if, that's really she's sort of my litmus test. If she sort of can get into something, one of my dumb ideas from the bar, yeah, then I've got something. Well, you got this is great. So the only question is, are you going to have to have a half a bottle of Jack before you go on TV to announce this? Oh, probably. <laughs> Kirk Buckner from the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame. You can vote by going to notinhalloffame.com. You'll see the nominees. You'll see the voting. This is very cool. Man, Kirk, this is great. I really love this idea. It totally drew me Thank in you. as well. I'm glad that we could catch up with you, uh, big guy. And uh, we'll be waiting for the, uh, the second class here. All right. Thanks so much. And it was a pleasure to be on. Thank you. All right, thanks to Kirk Buckner from the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame for joining us here on the Permission Granted Podcast. A reminder, we are available on both YouTube, youtube.com slash the DA show each and every week. It's available there. And also on iTunes. We're also available on SoundCloud as well. So whatever you use, you can always listen or watch the Permission Granted Podcast. Moraz joins me now. Now, Moraz, did you have a problem with Rocky Balboa being the first inductee into the fictitious athlete hall of fame no he's iconic he's remembered he's got fake statues or real statues of fake athlete in the city i got no issue with it yeah me neither i thought and and if there's an inaugural class like the first baseball class was i think christy matthewson ty cobb babe Babe ruth Ruth. i mean it's just one of those you know it's the greats of all time in one class we don't even debate it right and so rocky balboa i think understandably is the the first guy in totally makes sense all right number two did you like 
the Hall of Fame idea for fake athletes. I absolutely love it. I think it's the ultimate, like, it's so perfect that he figured that out basically sitting at a bar because it's the ultimate barroom talk. Right, yeah. And, and I kind of wish it was a real Hall of Fame. Like, that seems like a pretty funny road trip idea. It would be awesome. You know, if they kind of were able to, let's say, kind of mishmash it with, like, the way Madame Tussauds does, like, like the wax museum, kind right. of have the plaque, their credentials, and have, like, a wax figure of that athlete. Yeah. I think that would be awesome to visit. You know, if it was in... Even if you had a couple locations, even if it was just one, you know, you put one in Vegas or something, one in yeah. New York, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, yeah, Vegas would be a good idea. Um, all right, so let's look at this. You actually went to the contributor for your first your, your first argument with this. You think that we bypassed and glossed over a very important contributor. Uh, absolutely. I think Hayden Fox, the coach from Coach. Okay. You guys just briefly, oh, yeah, Hayden Fox, blah, 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 you know, talking about all these other contributors. Hayden Fox has some ex- unbelievable credentials. First of all, his success with the Minnesota Gophers, by the way, <laughs> not normally a great college program. You know, they kind of hang around. Top 25 recently, but not a, what he did there is tremendous. And then also, by the way, that it's interesting because when you have a TV series starring Craig T. Nelson, normally it's going to be like Northwest Minnesota State exactly. or Minnesota State of Mining or something like that. They actually use the Gophers, right? Right. They actually use Minnesota. And then they went to a fake expansion team in, in the NFL. Now, I wasn't a big coach uh, series fan, so tell me the, the plot line here when he moves. I knew oh, he was a coach of the Gophers. So basically, you know, the whole series basically is winding down. This is the last couple series, and how many more times can you go to the well in freezing Minnesota with the same storylines? So they're going to pick up and move him to Florida. So to, he has already built the Minnesota Golden Gophers program into a powerhouse. Right, and now he's earned, like a lot of college coaches, do a chance to coach in the NFL. <laughs> and an owner comes calling from Orlando with the new expansion team, which, by the way, could you imagine if they put an NFL expansion team in Orlando, <laughs> all the tourists basically, they call them the Orlando Breakers and okay. they're going to bring Coach down there Hayden Fox is going to go down there and he's going to he's going to lead this team, he brings he brings his two schleps, his offensive and defensive coordinators down there, now normally you got an expansion team, you got a college coach yeah. you're going to look for some coaches on the NFL level to help you out on that staff, he brings his boys, his trustworthy boys down there, now they're sunning, now they're almost like these old retirees getting their son in Orlando, okay. and they do a good job building up the program in Orlando So this is interesting, he's a bit of a Jimmy John Johnson, he went from college to the NFL, had success at both? Uh, yes, he had success. Now, to be honest, the way Coach ended is a little weary in my head. I'm not sure he ever got to the Super Bowl with the Orlando Breakers. <laughs> but, you know, think of it as Tom Coughlin getting the Jaguars to that sure. AFC championship. Hayden Fox did an excellent job, and I think his transition from his arc in his career from college to the NFL as a fake coach on a long, by the way, not a two-hour movie, a long television series, I think should put him in. Okay. All right. Now, I wasn't a coach guy. I'm surprised that you were because this— My I would dad think was, and it was one of those things I always— it was always on, and then the reruns were always on on the couch, and I just— I liked football, and I, you know, I wanted to spend time with my dad. That was one of those things I got into. I, was I liked it coach. enjoyable, or you just watched it because it was on? Boy, I got to be honest with you. I haven't seen a coach episode because the reruns used to be on. They're not on. I haven't no. seen a coach episode in at least five years. <laughs> so back then they were enjoyable. If I were to watch them today, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, you got a problem with our with our um, Adam Sandler rankings here? Absolutely. Now let me preface this by saying Happy Gilmore is probably one of the top five movies of my life. I love it. Love Happy Gilmore. Now, granted, is it you know Star Wars like your generation? No, but Happy Gilmore was well, great. I would say like, is it The Godfather? Or, you know? Well, Star Wars is remembered <laughs> yeah, that way. Yeah, okay, yeah. but well, I, but you always poke fun at Star Wars. But I digress. Happy Gilmore, I loved. Is he is Happy Gilmore the more iconic figure in movie history than Bobby Boucher? Absolutely. Yeah. But what I'm looking for is a guy who absolutely started on the field. Bobby Boucher was maybe the most dominating college athlete of all time, fake-wise, in a ah, movie. come on. He That's turned, not right. He, like you were just saying with Northwestern Tech State or whatever, he turned, what was it, Alabama Tech or whatever Louisiana, it was. Louisiana, it was like Northwest Louisiana Tech Whatever or it was, he made that. Basically, they had jerseys that you would get at the supermarket. Yeah. They get enough money, they go to the bowl. He dominates on special teams, dominates on defense, then becomes an offensive threat. He changed the sport. Like no other, the fake sport, where Happy Gilmore was all about his drive, the whole storyline about him learning how to putt. And let's face it, Happy Gilmore really didn't care if he won or lost. It was about making sure he had those checks to take care of his grandmother. I have a problem, though, putting Bobby Boucher in because of that point in Adam Sandler's career. It, the career arc and the movie quality is clearly going down. And so it's hard for me to put in Bobby Boucher before Happy Gilmore when Sandler is still at his peak. I think here's, here's your biggest problem. 
you're looking for the better movie. And we're not judging it by the movie. You're looking for the fake athlete to go into all the fame. <laughs> so the Bobby Boucher athlete and character was more dominating than Happy Gilmore. Uh, is um, Bobby Boucher in your mind better than Adam Sandler in the Longest Yard remake? Yes. Yes, he was more dominating. I mean, l- listen, let's the Adam Sandler, I thought, played a great character as far as, you know, on the field. The guy's basically, again, going back to throwing a game. Then he struggles. By the way, you're playing a bunch of prison guards. You're not playing an NFL team. Uh-huh. I know they're semi-pro or whatever. Yeah. You're a former big-time college and NFL quarterback, and you, you're struggling to beat these guys. I don't care who you have on the team. They should have won that game by 40 points. For the record, it was South Central Louisiana State University's Mud Dogs. The Mud Dogs. <laughs> and now, you know what? The committee would have a hard time keeping them out of the playoff if it was in real college football today. Well, that's not actually a bad point. They would, act, But they would have to be... they. At the very least, would get one of the non-power five conference. Right, bids. strength so they, of schedule is probably weak, and they would have they would have the highest ranking out of the the the, the non-power five conferences. Uh, any other um, arguments you you would have had with our conversation? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could go on and on with this because I love this oh, stuff. Boy. Forrest Gump, I mean, you only, uh, I know you had pinpointed the whole, his, basically his college career at Alabama. And he's really a special teams one-trick pony. Absolutely. He's not even a Desmond Howard that played a little wide receiver. No, no, because you you know, basically he doesn't have the mental fortitude to go out there and run a proper route. Doesn't know the offense. Tough picking up the complexities of a scheme. And has to rely on fans to hold up stop cards to make sure he stops and doesn't (laughs) run into the tunnel, which is a little weak. (laughs) However, I think even greater than that, so he becomes an All-American for returning kicks because of his speed, but even greater than that, his ping-pong ability was unbelievable. He takes the world stage. He was like the world's greatest ping-pong player. So when you consider what he did uh, for a Division I NCAA football program, granted only on special teams, and then what he did worldwide in ping-pong, he's the movie version of Bo Jackson. You know, I I hadn't thought about it that way, but you're right. I mean, he's really the arm of uh, Richard Nixon for ping-pong diplomacy when he goes across seas and uh, and extends through communism and and China. So it is... He is one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world, of ping pong. And then also, as Kirk brought up, very good at track as well that we don't remember. Long distance runner. I mean, the guys take sitting there, you know, the smiley face bumper stickers are getting better. And I'll do you one better. I know a lot of us will will not say this is a sport, but the outdoorsman will. He was the greatest shrimp boat, you know, fisherman ever. Right, but not a sport. Can't put him in a Hall of Fame because of his shrimp. Do they show fishing on ESPN? Yeah, but I, I don't think it's the same thing. Listen. I'm I saying think, that's the I fourth. Think, I don't think pulling up a net full of crawfish and shrimp is the same thing. You got to know being, where and when to lay the right bait. There's more into it. No. And that's his fourth. <laughs> that's his fourth sport. There. I'm saying how many sports and athletic competition this guy have to get into? Yeah, but you know what? Also, the the long distance running. He really creates the long distance running boom of the '70s. I mean, True. he is the father of that. True. So you that that might be the most impressive. Um, sports feet, athletic feet that he has. And you know what you got to respect him for? A lot like, um, let's say, Strahan or Bettis walking away at the Super Bowl. He just, when he's done, he's done, man. Yeah. He walked away from the long distance. He didn't, you know, basically start waiting for his knees to give out. He just was done. Right, and he wasn't doing it for the money either. He was just running basically for exercise. Exactly, which he, is great. Yeah, he he ran from the East Coast to the West Coast. How and, do you not cramp up more in that spot? And maybe back, and I don't know where he slept. They never showed that either. No, there's a lot of missing links there. <laughs> he was just running back and forth across the continent, and people just started following. It was pretty amazing. It's pretty. So I'm saying, if you really stack, I don't know how he doesn't go first ballot here. What's amazing is that we'll probably get a one-hour podcast out of just this one singular fake Hall of Fame. I'm gonna. It's going to take up most of my weekend discussing <laughs> what should be in and what should be out. All right. Mraz and Brock are next for the producer side B of the Permission Granted podcast. Find us on iTunes as well as YouTube, youtube.com slash the DA show. Unlucky episode 13 of the Permission Granted podcast. Many thanks to Kirk Buckner of the fictitious movie sports Hall of Fame website guy that we just had on. That was a pretty interesting interview that DA did. Uh, I never thought that we would get to a point where we'd be, you know, putting a Hall of Fame of fictitious sports movie characters. Mraz, what's going on? That's pretty crazy. Maybe it'll be a uh, fake broadcasters Hall of Fame that me and you can get in. Uh, I doubt that that's going to happen anytime soon unless our careers take a different trajectory in the next couple of years, and <laughs> I don't foresee that <laughs> happening, to be completely honest. Uh, let's jump right into it, because we were literally just talking before I started, before I hit the record button, about different uh, sports movie characters and different sports movies that you and I have either, you know, one of us has seen and the other hasn't, and we're kind of killing each other for that. So first, let's go into that. You have never seen Rocky. 
which Never. is not I, any I, of them. I, I it honestly, it blows my mind because you know I, it's probably a Philly thing. That's probably why you haven't ever watched it. But Rocky, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? Because it's an anti. It's a Philly. So I have an anti Philly thing. So that would be. Well, I eat cheesesteaks. What does that have to do with it? Because you're fat. Um, but the Chubby. everything else is no. Everything else is anti Philly. Let's be completely honest. You do not like anything about Philly. You were in Philly. What was that in the in the spring? And you told me flat out that you just don't like the city. Uh, yeah, I mean it's not New York. Put it that way. Uh, see exactly. So Rocky is just. Rocky is one of the greatest sports underdog movies of all time. And there's, you know, obviously they probably did far too many. You know, there's some really good ones. One and four are my favorite for obvious reasons. Four is my number one. Ivan Drago, Apollo Creed dying. So you should never be getting to a number four with a movie. I don't care how good it is. That's embarrassing. That has that is totally irrelevant and arguing against your point. And, and and to be fair, li- listen, have I watched Rocky straight through? No. Have I seen clips here and there? Yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah, but you don't he get He beats it. up the meat. He runs through the stairs. He's the guy. He's the hero. I who cares? I, you'd rather eat the meat than beat up the meat. Got to oh, always eat the meat. Out. Um, so I, I just I don't fathom how in 2014 that you've never sat and just watched Rocky. I mean, on a Saturday afternoon in the middle of winter when there's nothing else going on, the Rangers are playing on a Friday, they're off on a Saturday, you know, your Brooklyn Nets aren't playing. Can you do that? Can you do me one favor? Can you just watch Rocky this this Christmas time? Because you're going to have a couple weeks off at the end of the month, at the end of December. Is it on Netflix? If it's on Netflix, it's probably I can make it on attack. Netflix. I would think. I don't know. Netflix movie selection streaming kind of Here, sucks. Now here's the thing I'll say about that. There's a couple things. Number one, there was another classic sports movie that I had not seen in my life until recently, and then when I watched it after all the hype, I was so disappointed. That was Rudy. Oh, uh, Rudy sucks. I'm, Ru- I, I agree. Am not, Rudy Rudy's a sucks. terrible movie. Rudy, the story. I mean, get out of here. You're telling me this bum, five foot four, walk on white a guy bum. at Notre Dame. You I know, agree. basically, he goes to Holy Cross, and then somehow he gets into. No- it's totally just get out of my face. Get the with that. jacket. I mean, come on. I know, uh, I coach, uh, I'm I'm going to give my jersey in for Rudy. No, you're not. If you're a Notre <laughs> Dame player, you are not going to give in your freaking jersey for some right, you, DB. You, you think Everett Golson is taking no, up his jersey? No, hell no. Everett Golson, there's zero chance in hell that Everett Golson is walking in this, you know, uh, Ar- Sarke- not Sarkeesian. I can't even remember his freaking name now. Who cares? I hate Notre Dame as for many other reasons. But you see, that's my point, but though. The, oh, I was disappointed by, by Rudy, hold, hold so I feel on, like on, I'd on. be disappointed by, by Rocky. No, you won't be disappointed by Rocky. It's totally different. But can I tell you the best part in that movie, and some people forget that this guy was in it, Vince Vaughn. Oh, yes, Vince Vaughn is in running back. It. He's playing like this is the national championship. And it's like freaking practice in the spring. Like, oh, man, that that's one of my favorite Vince Vaughn characters and Vince Vaughn roles. <laughs> it's so small and so kind of innocuous and obscure, but I love Vince Vaughn there. So I, I, I got to kill you for, for never seeing Rocky. I, I got to be honest. I've seen like Devil Wears Prada three times and I've never seen Rocky. I mean, that's pretty embarrassing. I'd admit. Well, but who doesn't love the D loves B? Mm, what? The D wears P. The D loves B? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> that's what you said. The D wears P. That's what uh, <laughs> Jonah Hill's character said in The Sitter. He called it. Oh, well, anyway, we'll move on. The Sitter? Uh, what the hell? You're watching all these trash that's movies? That's a great movie, too. Stop Very it. Very funny. Well, how about the fact that... He is so unfunny after getting unfat. No, no, he gets back and, and he's fat in The Sitter. He's fat? I don't know. He fluctuated. Yeah, but I know... He's like uh, so wait, Mariah Carey. Fat guys are, are, for whatever reason, always pretty funny. I, you know, you have your moments where you're funny. But if you were to go skinny, I would not find you funny. And then if you were to go back to being fat, I think it loses some of its luster. It's like, yeah, you know you effed up the first time and now you got to go back to being a fatty. And it's like, ah, you should have stuck with it in the first place instead of trying to be Mr. Health Nut. So you're going to punish a guy for losing weight and then falling off the wagon and saying he's not funny anymore? Yeah, because that's his job. His job is to be fat and funny. That's mean. Oh, well, well, listen. That's who I am. More egregious than me not seeing Rocky, you not seeing the movie Slapshot. What is that even about? I, come on. I'm the Charleston serious. Chiefs. The what? It's a minor league South hockey Carolina? team. It's a minor league hockey team. They're basically, they're going bankrupt there. They're riding the bus. Like you know, Tropic Thunder? It's very similar. <laughs> Picture, you know, a 1970s version of Tropic Thunder. Hysterical. They import the Hanson brothers or these fighting brothers. Uh, they, they bring their toys. Ba- oh, my God. It's hysterical. Ba- dip it up. Ba- doom. Those no, Hanson no, brothers? No, not those Hanson brothers. Oh. The original Hanson brothers. Those Hanson brothers stole the Hanson brothers from these Hanson brothers. I highly doubt that the, the you know, boy toy Hanson brothers, you know, based their characters off of 1970-something, whatever, satire Paul hockey. Norman. Who? Come on. Nah, dude. I, I honestly... I, You're I from Philly. No Don't you love fighting? Don't you love trash? I mean... Trash? Whoa. Well, I mean, what that's... The 
based. Is the movie based on you know garbage men? I know it's like you know, <laughs> Are you saying Philly's uh, trash, scummy players, if you will. Uh, what does that have to? Uh, well, you know, everybody from Philly's fighting, throwing batteries. I you man, you walking no. me in circles here, chasing my tail. Yo, time out. Can we talk about the video that we watched the other night of the Ottawa Senators and the Toronto oh. Maple Leafs fan? Did you just say yo, time out? Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, that was awkward. Well, what do you want me to do? Put my hands on my shoulders like I'm calling a 30 second T? Uh, you said yo, time out. Time, I go because I wanted. I had to, you know, make a point of emphasis to stop All because right. I wanted to reference the hockey fight. All right, reference Ooh. the hockey fight. So the other night, Mraz and I are here. We're doing some show prep stuff, and I'm going through the websites, and I come across a video of a Toronto Maple Leafs fan and an Ottawa Senators fan basically throwing haymakers up in the third it's level. So funny. They're, like, pushing each other and the security, you know. By the way, can we get some updated security guys at these freaking venues? You got these 60-year-old guys. They're going to stop these 25-year-old punks who are loaded. Trying like, to watch the game, eh? Yeah, bro. <laughs> That's a terrible Canadian impersonation. But. So, anyway, so the guys are pushing back and forth, and then this random Maple Leafs fan just kind of comes out of nowhere and dumps his full, like, you know, 18-ounce beer. Molson? Probably a Molson, maybe uh, Labat a, Blue. Labat Blue uh, dumps it on the guy's head, and then you know, so he gets hit, and then the other guy comes in, one of the original fighters, and basically, you know, German suplexes the guy down a flight of concrete stairs. It Is it safe to go good. to games anymore? It's a little tough. Oh it's a my little tough. god! Why don't you just sit down? You don't, you know, start. Yeah, you know, some guy yells at you. Sit down. Yeah, you know, take take the play off. I- I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, this is just absurd. So, no, those kind of fights don't happen in Philly. I mean, not the last time I was there. Believe me, they happen. You had a jail cell built in your stadiums. It happens. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's, that stadium has since been, you know, knocked down and built into a, uh, a you know, eight-bar bonanza. Isn't there a bonanza. secret tunnel to a hotel? No, that's such a, that's one of the, like, a folklore of Philly. Yeah, the the Holiday Inn has a uh, underground tunnel that goes to Citizens Bank, to the Link, and to Wells Fargo, so that um, so that visiting players can get get back to the hotel safely. And that's not even where the the teams stay. I mean, that would be so dumb to stay there. It's such a trash hotel. All right, to stick with the movie theme, let's go with our favorite sports movie characters. I'll let you lead this one off, Mraz. My number one. Mm-hmm. Has to be Shane Falco from The Replacement. That's pretty good. Because here's the thing about Shane Falco. He's the ultimate comeback story. He implodes in the fake dish, his sugar Ohio bowl. State Buckeye. Yeah, well. implodes in the sugar bowl, has the comeback. Reminiscent of an Ohio State team. Right. Now, <laughs> parts of this movie made no sense, like certain players crossing the picket line. Isn't it come one, come all? Shouldn't they have all crossed the picket line at the same time? No, I feel like there's always the, you know, the uh, that was scabs. A that was a lot. But however... You know, you think about, you know, he's the good-looking, heartthrob quarterback, and there he goes, and he gets the aged cheerleader. He doesn't even get the hot she, 20-year-old. I, she's smoking in Listen, that movie. Listen, she looked good. She's got a tight body. But she's a weathered cheerleader. Put she, it that way. So the old-weathered the quarterback, yes, gets the old-weathered cheerleader there. Great love story. The guy is just tremendous. The teammates love him. I'm pretty sure he was inactive for that last game. He comes off the boat and comes in the second right. half. Is that I legal? Don't, I don't think that would have been legal. I don't think so But either. it made for a great story. Gotta love Shane Falco. He would go in the Hall of Fame for me. I think Shane Falco is a great character. This is probably a movie that you've never seen or never heard of, but it is one of my all-time favorite sports movies. Have you ever heard of Vision Quest? No. Is that the one with Tim Allen in space? No. That was Galaxy Quest, I think. Vision Quest is a uh, movie based on a guy, uh, a high school kid who is a wrestler out in, you know, uh, Middle Earth. Middle... Right off the bat, you're wrong. Wrestling is not a sport. Yes, so. stop it. It's um, an activity. No, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll introduce you to some of my wrestling friends, and then you'll see how much of an activity it is. So anyway, so he's like, you know, it, it, the whole buildup is that he's a, he's a really good wrestler at his weight class, but he wants to drop down a weight class from 181 to 171, or 185 to 171, and because the best wrestler in the state is at 171, and he wants to go on, and the guy's name is, um, is Shoot, a perfect name for a wrestler, Shoot. So he goes in, and it's this whole buildup, and he ends up falling in love with this woman who's traveling in the country and ends up staying with her dad, and or his dad, and, and um, you know, him, for an uh, extended amount of time. And it's just, it's what I'm totally underselling it here, but I will watch that anytime it's on TV. I can never find it on Netflix. I need to just get a DVD player and buy the DVD because it's one of the all time greats. You don't own a DVD player? No, I don't. It's, I only have what? an Apple, I have an Apple TV. That's it. So, like, when I get, you know, if, like, someone hands me... if You don't like, have, like, a game system or anything? No. I gave my old roommate my Xbox 360 because I don't play Xbox 360 anymore. 
That's bizarre. Hey, I don't have any sort of way to play. You don't DVDs. rent a movie at Redbox ever. No, nothing. No. I'll buy it on. I'll buy it off Apple TV or I'll buy it off of. Um, That's strange. Off of uh, HBO. One guy who you know tries to give me movies on the reg and that I used to have to watch on my computer, Jay Berman, who's going to be the subject of our next little conversation. How about that tie-in? Thanks. That's why we're professionals here, Merez. Uh, Berman had a little bit of a Twitter. Moment failure today. Yeah, okay. Do you want to set this up because this is really your baby here? <laughs> it's it's the ultimate epic fail. We do the epic fail every day on the DA show, which can be heard from two a.m. to six a.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Radio. Is that right? Yes. So, uh, how's based, that show? Any good? Uh, very good. Essentially, they got a funny uh, fatty, funny fatty behind the glass. Very funny. <laughs> Leads a fake nation. Uh, so anyway, fictitious characters. Right. Those all kidding aside. Those who listen to the show know Bully Berman. He's become infamous on the show. Uh, we're friendly with Bully Berman, even though some of our listeners probably would like if we stood strong and didn't like Bully Berman. Yeah, I mean, off the air, he's a great guy. He's right. one of the one of my favorite people that work here. Right. So every once in a while, there we get to, you know, in Manhattan, there's a lot of us live in Jersey, Long Island, can, you know, Connecticut, the city. It's not often that we all get to hang out. We no, like to have a get together. It's very rare. Right. So there's somebody's birthday coming up, um, and basically... You know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get together and do whatever. So I had lied. We're going to go to a bar and we're going to get drunk exactly. is what we're going to do. Okay. I, li- I, I don't know why Mraz is afraid to say that. Jay we're going to really- go and just get absolutely obliterated in New York City. Jay uh, obviously wanted to see us. <laughs> I made up a lie knowing that I was going to go and told him I was going to Atlantic City. Right. So Which he- I actually believed because that was a group chat between the three right. of us. And I was like, yo, what the hell? No, no, no. But I, I will be there. So basically... Jay is all angry at this and decide he must have got home from work or whatever he did. Wife probably left her Twitter account open on Facebook. Wife, very nice lady, Paula. LP. Follows List producer. Us on, yeah, follows us on Twitter. Uh, actually, I don't know if she follows me on Twitter. Uh, you know that. what? She follows me, so is, I guess she has a favorite. producer is not following K Brock JR. Well, Paula and I got something to talk about. Well, she got a free Twitter plug on the podcast. How about that? So hey, she's got a book coming out too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's You're a well, podcast guest to come on. <laughs> So <laughs> making lists. So Jay signs up or logs on to his wife's Twitter and decides to tweet at all of us that she's looking forward to seeing us and we better all be there. Here's the actual tweet. Absolute must that both Bogish CBS and Sean Morash CBS arrive for K Brock JR's party next Friday. We'll talk about that on next week's podcast. Uh that would be that would be an inexcusable absence. Hashtag miss you. Obviously, we've all gotten pretty close here together. Paula and Jay were at uh, Mraz's wedding, so we all right. became very chummy there. She was awesome. She's one of the, the sweetest people on the face of the earth. Very fun, very outgoing, way more fun than Berman is, I'll tell you that. Guy's basically, Absolutely. I don't know how he got her, because he's basically Matter a Matter of fact, loser. I think our audience would love Paul. I think that they definitely would. There's no no doubt about it. So, basically, you know, so he goes into that, then we all start tweeting back and forth of each other. And, then and, and something don't sit right, because she's basically talking like Jay would on Twitter, and we right. realize... And he's yet to admit this. Jay has hijacked his wife's Twitter here. Right, and he's MIA throughout this whole back and forth on Twitter. Right, so he would have chimed in from his. Yeah. Which goes to show you, this has to be one of the most egregious and pathetic moments in a man's life when you have to take to your wife's social media account to beg your friends to hang out. Who has more followers than him, by the way? Oh, that's got to sting a little I mean, bit there, Jay. I mean, you think about the trials and tribulations of Jay Berman. Is He's there got a some lower, low points. Is there a lower point in his life than taking over his wife's Twitter? I mean, what a loser. I mean, he did fart on air one time. He did do that. Th- that's a low point. That's a severe, I don't know. If the boss has ever heard that, Berman may not. That's a severe low point. But he hit it up with, like, the the, the chair squeaking, too. Uh, <laughs> it was a cover-up. <laughs> no, there was no cover-up. We know exactly what that was because we both looked at him. He did, like, the old leg lift. That and when it's powerful enough to be picked up on mic. Yeah, right, exactly, because it's not like he was holding the mic down to his I don't think ass. those windscreens have been replaced since, by the way. Yeah, DA, enjoy that. No, DA brings us out yes. for that specific reason because of the spittle and farting that goes on into the microphones. Yeah, I got to agree that Berman is pretty, pretty pathetic for doing what he did. I mean, if you got a problem with it, he did. He kind of cussed you out via text message, but I guess maybe he thought a third-party, non-biased peer pressure but would. That, but see, that's what makes him a loser hmm. because he believes that by pretending to be his wife, his wife will coax us to come out. He doesn't oh, I'm even... already going out. Right, but that's the point. He basically feels like his wife has more power over his friends coming out than he does. Well, maybe... What a pathetic sap. I, I have to agree... I... I'm really torn on this because I kind of get it because, you know what, he went above and beyond. You know, he's kind of like Will in Baltimore. He knows what the end game is, and he just had to kind of, you know, Will wanted to be a part of the 12 DAs. 
Berman wants us to be a part of going out next Friday night, the 21st of Watch, November. Watch, only so he can end up flaking, by the way. No, he won't flake. I know that he'll be there in full force because Berman and I have been out on the town once or twice, and it does not end well, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but he kind of circumvented the system. He decided, you know what, my my message is falling on deaf ears, so I'm going to go through a third-party, non-biased um, outsider and try to coax them into coming because we're all already going and— the, the, you know what the root of the issue is? You saying that you're going to freaking AC. Why not just say, yo, listen, I'm coming. Got to mess with him. No. And you know what? If enough people think I'm not going to come and then I make the grand surprise entrance, you know what? All so eyes it's all on about, me. It's all about, that's what it all, all comes back. All eyes on me. Fatty always has to have all. Chubby all-off. always Fatty, has to have eyes Fatty on him, Chubby. Fatty always has to be the center of freaking attention. As if being the, you know, the national punchline for the DA show isn't enough on 180-something radio national stations. national punchline? Yeah, you are. Topeka, Kansas doesn't think I'm a punchline. No, but Grand Rapids, Michigan, sure as I'll think you're doing. Well, so does right. 960 up in Calgary. I mean, do we want to run down the list? Sorry that Topeka's filled with a bunch of fatties. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, Topeka. I used to date a girl who had family in Topeka. How about that? Really? Yeah. Topeka's random. a type of pudding, too, right? No, that's tapioca. Very close. That's uh, mm, not really. I was going to say, did they make Topeka pudding in Topeka? But now it's tapioca, so that ruins that whole theory. That destroys that whole theory. Not to be confused with Topanga in Boy Meets World. Yeah, she... Uh, if you could it. live with one thing in your life, would it be Topeka, tapioca, or Topanga? I don't like tapioca. Topeka is not really appealing, so I guess MFK, Mary Bleep Kill, I guess Mary would have to be Topanga. And I'd have to kill t- tapioca and F Topeka. That would be an interesting science experiment. <laughs> I don't know how that would work out. I feel like there's some sort of evolutionist out there who would disagree with my <laughs> nice little theory. <laughs> uh, so another theory that we have rolling here are Sean and I, or Mraz and I, bad people. We work with Schwartz oh, on a nightly basis. <laughs> hey, this is your idea. You said you texted me this topic. Are we? Are Sean and I bad people? So we work with Schwartzo. Schwartzo is a great guy. Great guy. He's awesome. Great dad. Great prefaces. dad. Great dad. Great dad. Do the old sugar coat everything before right, we right. get no, into the punchline. No, you give a compliment line. sandwich here. You, you give a compliment, then you give what you don't like, and then you end it with a compliment. So you know he's a great guy. Great dad. You know we love working with him. Everything, the whole nine. But he likes to you know keep us abreast of the situations that are going on within the Schwartzo family. And his oldest son, Bradley plays uh, eight-year-old football, and his football team is pretty good, apparently. You know, I think they're in a four-team league, and they have, like, you know, a couple wins, and they just won. I think it's more the four-team was, was the <laughs> oh, little league. Baseball? This is actually most of the towns on Long Island play, so i got to uh, be honest. Okay. They, they oh, got... and it was a three-team baseball league that all made the World exactly, Series. Exactly. <laughs> it was a round robin. Now you're short robin. <laughs> the football stuff, i got to be honest, impressive run they've So had. you can see, we know way too much about the Schwartzo family lineage and the F- Schwartzo family um, Athleticism? extra career. Cur- curricular activities so pete gives us a nightly update on what's going on with the levittown red devils not a weekly after the game we'll get no, no, every no, update after practice how was practice you know film review session what did bradley do how many up downs did he hit at home last night you know did he have a snickers bar before bed what's the uh you know can he get a cherry coke through a couple egg waffles <laughs> in the toaster gotta beef up <laughs> so he plays center and he plays he rotates in on the defensive line so I guess they just won what would be like the NFC Championship game? Uh, no, no, no. They won like what would be the divisional round, and now they're going to what they're calling the NFC. Cha- I guess they separated this in the conference. The NFC Championship game is what they're entering. Okay. They're a win away okay. from a little trip to the Super Bowl, okay, so which will be played at some elementary school, I'm sure. Well, not no exactly pressure. getting on the flights to Arizona. No, no, they're not flying down to Arizona or Jacksonville or Indy or, or even to MetLife. They're not going anywhere like that. They're going to go to a PS 142 elementary school on a Sunday at 9 o'clock. Can you have a worse start time? Schwartz told me the start time for the game last week was like 9 a.m. You're in a divisional round. Can we get something under no, the lights? When you're, but here's the thing. When you're an 8-year-old kid, you have your most energy early in the morning. No, dude. When I played football, when I played Wee football like that, we played on Tuesday and Thursday nights. And Friday, not Friday nights because that's high school. But we played Tuesday, Thursday nights. We were under the lights. It was the most badass thing I've ever been a part of. Well, Long Island, exactly. I mean, he had a three-team Little League, as we say. <laughs> Not everything's badass over there. So, why don't you finish this up? So, you essentially, a- the, the, to bring this full circle, the question why me and Kenny could be bad people is, 
we've gotten to the point where, and this led into last week when they were entering the playoffs. Yeah, we are openly rooting against the Levittown Red Devils to be eliminated here, and not win a Super Bowl. We set the spread last week at Levittown getting nine points. We have yeah, no versus, idea. Yeah, versus an unbeaten Malvern. Versus an unbeaten Malvern team. Which I can't they, we're breaking down Pee Wee football I, I, here. <laughs> but right, this is what's going to get us into the fictitious sports. Broadcasters so Hall of Fame. <laughs> bottom line is this. The, the point being, we are so sick and tired of every, hearing about every it. night having to hear about it. I get it. Pete is a proud father. Absolutely. And this is where I'll give him credit. He's a great dad. He always is doing something with the kids. Know your audience. And he's a, Exactly. He <laughs> comes to us. He'll come to me. I mean, the Giants haven't won a game in about a month and right. a half. I'm sitting there devastated every Sunday night, and he comes in with the old pat on the back. Man, Bradley had a big pancake today, and no, not the kind for breakfast. <laughs> and he's sitting there telling me, you know, how the Red Devils won, they keep advancing, and now they're in the playoffs. And I am sitting there every week going, can somebody beat this damn team and I get mean, them out? I thought because, they were going to go down last week in the Malvern. I mean, basically, you know, Pete's walking around like his kid's Kevin Mawai Jr. I have had it. <laughs> how about okay? that? The last thing we need, the kid already won the three-team World Series. <laughs> this, this kid needs to taste some losing. He's going to go out there and win a Super Bowl now, go on an improbable run. Oh, man. And the, the team they beat was unbeaten. They're acting like it was the Patriots in 07. He's giving me the old, uh, <laughs> uh, this is what made no sense, 18 wins and one Red Devil loss. That analogy doesn't make any sense. The Giants team name fit in there, a giant loss. Nobody has a Red Devil loss. Right. That was stupid. And how about the – well, since you mentioned Kevin Mawai, how about Schwartz reaching out to Kevin Mawai? Oh Can we break God. down that quick story? Oh, yes. <laughs> so the, it's getting a little chilly up here in the northeast in New York. And, and you know, when you're playing football, you you know, when it's cold out, you don't have as good a grip on the football unless, you, you know, you lick your fingers or you have a glove with some stick on it. So Schwartz used to cover the Jets back in the day for WFAN, and I guess he got chummy with – Kevin Mawai, former center of the New York Jets. Good player, so I give him credit. No, he made a contact. Absolutely, that's a great contact. Apparently, he called Kevin Mawai to ask Kevin Mawai well, what kind to, of— to say what's up first. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Little, no preamble there. Just, hey, Kevin, how are you? Peter Schwartz here. I'm Peter Schwartz. And he gives him the preamble, says hello in the voicemail, and then asks Kevin Mawai what kind of gloves his 8-year-old should buy to keep his hands warm and to have a firm grip on the ball as a center. I like a nice firm ball. Could you go to the freaking sports authority or Modell's and ask one of the little, you know, underpaid, you know, nine dollar an hour guys no, freaking no, working you, there? If you got a connection with an NFL center and he wants, what's he his... going to send you a pair of his old gloves that are going to be twelve sizes too big? He, here's the point. Goodness, I mean, he's Pete, trying to I get any. You. He's trying to get any edge for the Red Devils and for his son that he can. And, and if he's got the NFL connection, he's going to play. It. Okay, how many Super Bowls did uh, Kevin Moore win? I don't think he won any. No, I don't think he did either. How many Pro Bowls did? He? Well, I, I think yeah, he a lot of a Pro, Pro Bowls. Bowls. He might be a Hall of Famer. I probably is a Hall of Famer. God, did we ever think we'd be breaking down Kevin Mawai on a podcast? No, I think that so could anyway. be our cue to wrap this up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we need to find it. No, no, no. We got to end it with a Schwartz compliment because we did the doing the compliment sandwich here. Go get them, Red Devils. Not. <laughs> uh, so, are Sean and I bad people? Let us know what you think. At Sean Morash, CBS, at K Brock JR. We are openly rooting for an eight year old to lose in his championship game. Not a group of eight year olds. A Not the singular eight year old. I don't want Bradley himself to lose. I want the team to lose. I want the team to go down in flames. <sighs> but don't look at it that way. We're openly rooting for another group of eight year olds to win. That's fair. That's that's a spin right that's, there. That's glass half full kind of look right there. I really like that outlook, Moraz. That's how I'm approaching this going forward. All right, so that'll wrap it up for episode 13 of the Permission Granted Podcast. Once again, we give you white-hot sports takes on a weekly basis. Make sure to check us out on iTunes. Subscribe to us there to the Permission Granted Podcast. Check us out on YouTube. You can like and subscribe to the YouTube page, youtube.com slash the DA show. DA will post this to Facebook, uh, the SoundCloud version or and or the YouTube version, depending on you know how frisky he's feeling, and that'll be Facebook.com slash the DA show. You don't have to be a member of Facebook to you know like the show page. And also check us out on Twitter. I'm at K Brock JR. Sean, Mar- Sean Moraz is at Sean Morash CBS. Enjoy uh, I don't know, I always end this with something about, you know, what week is it in college football? What Just week enjoy is it in life? NFL? Uh, Go get them. Go get them this week. And that's going to be our words of wisdom from Moraz and Brock. Go get them, boys and girls.